All right. As a, as a general rule of thumb, uh, coming down to the Niagara, it typically uh, presents you with conditions you're not expecting. Uh, if you're expecting clear water, it'll be dirty. If you're expecting it to be low, it'll be high. If you're expecting it to be ice-free, it'll be slush. Um, so it kind of forces anglers uh, to try things out of their comfort zone or possibly not to fish the river at all. Um, but I found over the years some of my best days on the water, some of my more productive days were ones where I didn't come down with a game plan in mind. You know, if you come down expecting to fish beads and bags or whatever and the conditions aren't conducive to fishing that way and if you don't bring anything else then uh, you're gonna have a rough day so over the years I've come up with some different things to, to try on the water some of them are a little less conventional than other techniques but uh, I've had some pretty good days with uh, drifting like a inline spinner underneath a float um, marabou jigs are a good option at times I've had days where I just fish a little uh, a little spoon under a float. I've changed the hook uh, to a single hook just in case I get a laker. They're a little easier to get unbuttoned that way. Uh, jigs with uh, minnows on them have uh, typically work well when the, the salmon are out of the system. But uh, basically, you know, if you use beads and bags, you're basically dead drifting. But the difference with fishing these types of lures and that is uh, you can impart a little action on the bait. Or uh, with these in particular, like uh, jig heads with uh, Colorado blades and stuff on them, like you can get uh, a little more vibration and, and flash into the water and, and help draw them in. So the water's, the visibility's a little lower than I was expecting, but uh, so I'll try to, I'll rotate through these options and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I got these from uh, TJ Stallings from uh, TTI Blakemore uh, before he passed and uh, I caught some nice fish on them in the past and he was kind enough to put me on the catalog, uh, the cover of his catalog so I might uh, take a couple of drifts with this today just to uh, just to remember him but uh, anyways I'm going to see what happens here.
The whole idea behind this video was just to show that, yes, you know, when you're drift fishing, you can catch doing a dead drift. If you're running a bead, if you're uh, running a roll bag, um, or if you're running a fly, or uh, anything else, um, you know, dead drifting obviously works. Uh, it's kind of the ultimate goal for a lot of guys when you're out there. Uh, whether you're fly fishing or uh, float fishing is to get a perfect dead drift and have the most natural presentation for the fish. Not all the food in, in the river you know, is dead or you know, kind of free floating. Uh, and these are predatory fish as well. So uh, there are minnows in the system and, and other things that move around. Uh, gobies and shiners, insects and that. Even in fly fishing, you know, guys will use like tube flies and streamers and impart action on it. So I want to talk about the other lures that you can impart action on under a float as another option when you're on the river. I started out using these years ago and I talked about them in the intro. The road runners, I like to tip them with a minnow. We check the uh, float against the current a little bit and kind of engages the, the little Colorado blade under the jig head. I've caught some nice fish. Uh, I was actually fishing the Whirlpool one time with Roshi Nishine that uh, he has a bunch of uh, jerk baits and bass baits including these uh, drop shot minnows and uh, I've uh, I caught one of my biggest lake trout on on this while I was fishing the whirlpool with him a few years back. You know the inline spinner I talked about. I was just experimenting with things that I could check against the current under the float. I had one of my better days for brown trout uh, doing that. Uh, an inline spinner with a like a little minnow, uh, plastic minnow behind it. I've caught numerous lake trout and things over the years using like little like hair jigs or marabou jigs or bunny strips and uh, these are things that you can kind of twitch under the float and give action to. I have these little William spoons. They're very very light. They're called um, darties and they come with a treble hook and they're very light and I've check these against the current too under a float and I got one of my biggest browns doing that but I like to switch out the hook for just a single hook because the treble hooks I just find you get in a lot of trouble these mustad ones one of my friends really likes them but I, I don't really care for them too much anymore they kind of bend out and that's one of the reasons he likes them is he likes that they bend out in a snag and then you're not constantly retying I like a little bit of a stronger hook I like the Gamagatsu uh, one aught. This particular pack is a two aught. The tackle shop was out of the one aught. So I've been fishing the two aught hook a little bit this year, but I don't particularly like it. Um, it's nice and strong, 
but I find you take it takes a little more pressure to actually get it to go into the fish's mouth so I think though next time I go to the tackle shop I'm gonna check keep my eyes out for the one out hook when I'm fishing these I take a, a little a BB shot and uh, put it on just under the eye here put the little BB on here just as a kind of a jig head when you first start experimenting with these minnows you can place them in the water in front of you to see if you have too much weight or not enough weight and see how it behaves in the water you might have to rehook it a couple times so that it doesn't uh, do a death roll um, when the when the water acts against it, it hopefully it it swims true nice and straight if it if it starts to spin in the current you might need more weight or you might need to straighten it um, on the hook so it it doesn't look unnatural it's pretty much my favorite way to, to fish the the bigger water and it's a technique that you can use on smaller water as well but it's just a, another thing to think about um, even if you don't use this technique all the time it's maybe just something to to experiment with if uh, if you're having a slower day when you're dead drifting and you're not catching anything and it, it might be something to think about now when I'm fishing these minnows the thing that's nice is there's a lot of them on the market uh, I find that the clearer the water is the more lifelike my minnow has to be so little details like like eyeballs and uh, you know translucency and natural colors and natural action and all those little details are more important the clearer the water is if you want to do a dead drift with a minnow I will go with like a white minnow a dead bait fish or something that's been coughed up by another fish is most likely going to be white so if you're gonna dead drift a minnow I would probably just stick with a white minnow but there's a ton of different options out there and I haven't finished experimenting with all this either I've tried these in the water. Uh, they're little jackal minnows with a little paddle tail on the back, uh, 2.8 inches. And uh, I've checked these against the current and they swim really well. So I'm anxious to spend some more time on the water with these. But when the visibility's down, there's lots of options you know, uh, that exist on the market already. You can start to go with some chartreuse colors and that. When you head out on the water, you know, don't be afraid to, to experiment and maybe incorporate one or two of these ideas into your, uh, into your arsenal. You know, John and Goldie and myself have spent a number of trips on the water this year trying to put together a decent video. Uh, the conditions this year haven't been conducive to that. John and myself fished uh, on his birthday this year and we didn't really bring any cameras with us the conditions were terrible the water was right up into the trees we put a couple hours in and John managed to catch a nice fish just as we were leaving he was using a white minnow under his float and that was kind of a nice way to cap that day off the majority of our trips this year haven't ended with fish a lake Erie is way up this year probably in the neighborhood of two feet high and the fact that the you know Lake Erie is not frozen this year the the river keeps uh, blowing out and also with the high water, the, the drifts in the whirlpool haven't really been setting up the same. So even when you do get good conditions and good visibility, you might be standing in your favorite drift and it's not setting up. You know, five minutes it'll drift clockwise and then the next five minutes it'll drift counterclockwise and it's really put the fish off this year. So, but I feel there's a, you know, there's a lot of opportunity yet to, to come this season. Uh, if you do get on the water and you do get the opportunity to try some of these ideas you know I hope you do well I can put a link to the video that we did uh, last year on uh, on John's birthday where we incorporated these techniques and you can see how productive they can be with that said hopefully uh, the weather improves and uh, we can get out carp fishing soon but anyways uh, good luck on the water Got ourselves a nice brown here.
take it on the road runner. Thanks, buddy.